Welcome back to P1. Today we're going to look at Unit 2.1, Solving Quadratic Equations. So a quadratic equation can be written in the form AX squared plus BX plus C and to solve it we'd want to make it equal to zero. A, B and C are real constants in this case and a cannot be equal to zero otherwise it wouldn't be a quadratic now what we're going to do is we're going to solve by factorizing and we're going to solve by using the formula now none of this is new this is all GCSE level um, topic and questions but it is a really important topic as you go forward, so you do have to be pretty good at this to make your life so much easier when we, we move forward through the course. So, if I have a problem like this, x squared minus 5x plus 18 equals 2 plus 3x, first thing I need to do is make sure that I get all of my values onto one side, all my terms onto one side, so that um, my equation will equal zero. So I want to take my 2x and my, sorry, my 2 and my 3x and move them essentially onto the left side. That's my aim. So doing that, taking away 3x will give me negative 8x. Taking away 2 will give me 16. And then solving this, I need to look for what will multiply to give me the 16 and essentially add to give me the negative 8. In this case, this is x minus 4, x minus 4. You could also write this as x minus 4 squared. And then the solution to this would be x minus 4 equals 0, so x is equal to 4. It's a very straightforward one, nice and easy one to start off with. Okay, let's have a little look at another one. Go on, first one. X squared equals 7x. So again, let's make sure everything is on one side of the equals. Okay, um, just let me go back there, because there is a common mistake here that people make. So sometimes what people will do is uh, divide through by x and go, well, x equals 7. Okay, but that's wrong because what you're doing there, you're losing one of your solutions. Okay, so just going back to how we do need to do it. So x squared minus 7, x equals 0. And then I don't divide, I need to factorize. So taking x out, x minus 7 inside the brackets. This now means that x equals 0 or x minus 7 equals 0. So x equals 7. So you can see what you would do is, if you divided by x, you'd actually lose this solution. Okay? Which will then lose you most of the marks. Okay, let's have a look at a third one. 6x squared plus 13x. Minus 5 equals 0. So this time we're factorising this. Let's go into two brackets now. With the minus 5, it does mean I have to have a 1 and a 5. And one of them has to be positive and one of them has to be negative. And then I'm looking for combinations then with the 6x where this can be split up into a 1 and 6 or a 2 and a 3. This one could only be a 1 and a 5. And I'm looking for the combinations that would give me that positive 13 in the middle. So let's have a little look. Um, so if I'm looking up here, the 1 and the 6 and the 1 and a 5, multiplying these, I could get 1 and 30. It's always going to, one's going to be positive, one's going to be negative, so that's not going to give me my 13. Or I could have 5 and 6. Again, that's not going to give me 13. 2 and 15. Ah, that will give me the 13. 
So 2 times 1 and 3 times 5. I want the 3 times 5 to be positive and the 2 times 1 to be negative. So I want the 3 times 5 and the 2 times 1. I want the 2 times 1 to be negative and I want the 3 times 5 to be positive. And then let's just double check. 6x squared, 15x, minus 2x is 13x, minus 5. And then solving, so we get 3x minus 1 equals 0, or 2x plus 5 equals 0. 3x equals 1, x is 1 third. Terrible 3 there, and 2x equals negative 5, x equals negative 5 over 2. So there's my two solutions. And don't forget the reason you are writing this is that if I make the bracket 0, then 0 times anything is 0. And that's my goal. That's why we need to make sure that this is always equal to 0. OK, I'm going to give you a few of these to try now. Okay, let's look at uh, question five. I think the first four were quite straightforward, so I just put the answers up for those. Right, question five. So to make six, it'd be a one, a six, two, and a three. To make three, it can only be a one and a three. It's going to be a negative three at the end, so we know we've got to have one of these is positive and one is negative. Don't know which way around yet. So let's look. So I just want to try and get to the 7, just want to go through these, so if I think one, that's going to give me 1, that's going to give me 18, and there's no way to get to the 7, that's going to give me 6, that's going to give me 3 again, I can't get to the 7, like 6 take away 3, or 3 take away 6 isn't going to give me 7. So these two are gone, I can get rid of those. It's definitely, if it works, if it factorises, it would have to be these two. So let's look, 2 and 3, so it's 2 and 9. 9 take away 2 will get me to the 7, okay? So I'm in the right place. You know, if you look at the other way around, it's 3 and 6, it's not going to get me 7. So I want the 3 times 3 to get me the 9, and the 2 times 1 to get me the 2. Uh, to get the minus 7, so I need 2 take away 9. Okay, so that's what I'm thinking of, 2 take away 9. So when I'm setting this up, I want 2 times 1, so the 1 will have to be here, and I want 3 times 3, so the 3 will have to be here. I want the 2 to be positive, and I want the 3 then to be negative because I want this as a negative 9 and a positive 2. Then, let's obviously equal to 0, so 2x minus 3 equals 0, or 3x plus 1 equals 0. So we've got 2x equals 3x equals 3 over 2. 3x equals minus 1, x equals minus 1 over 3. And there are my two answers. Okay, number 6. So this one I need to first make it equal to 0. So let's get everything to the left in this one. Let's go add the 2x squared, so 6x squared minus 6x. So plus 11x equals 0. Uh, so we can only factorise out the 6, uh, the x, sorry, 6x plus 11 equals 0. So x equals 0, or 6x plus 11 equals 0. 6x equals minus 11. So there we are, x is negative 11 over 6. So there's my two answers there. Okay, number 7. So to do this, I'm going to have to split up into two rectangles. Now, normally you could go across this way, but with 
this x plus 3 is a lot harder to split up, I think. Maybe not. Actually, it's probably not. But I think we've got a little bit less a little bit less work to do if I split it up the other way. So let's split it up this way. So we got x times x. So we got x squared. And then we do need this top one here. So all the way along is 2x. Part of the way is 1x. So this top one has got to be 1x. So then we've got an x, x plus 3. Okay, x times x plus 3. Okay, which I can expand, but I won't for a second. So we've got x squared plus x, x plus 3. Okay, so that area is one rectangle plus the other one, or technically a square plus a rectangle. And that's going to equal 44, as that's what the question says at the top. We got x squared plus x squared, 3x minus 44 when I get everything to one side. 2x squared plus 3x minus 44 equals 0. So let's start it off. So we know we've got over 2x and an x. Um, 44, immediately kind of what jumps out there is 4 and 11. And let's have a look, yeah, two fours are eight. Eight and 11 has a difference of three. We want a positive 11, take away the eight. And there we have it. So we got two X plus 11 equals zero, or X minus four equals zero. And I'm just gonna squeeze in the bottom. We'll have X equals minus 11 over two and x equals 4 as my two answers there. And then finally question 8. We want to square both sides. So we have 5x plus 3 squared equals 3x plus 7. Expanding this bracket, so we've got square the first, 25x squared double the product so three fives are 15 so this is 30 x and square the last plus nine um, sorry equals three x plus seven so we have 25 x squared take away the three plus 27 x take away the seven plus two equals zero Okay, it should be quite easy, this one, really. We can only have, the last numbers can only be a 1 and a 2. They definitely, everything has to be positive. So you want it like that, because you want 25x plus 2x to get the 27x. So here we have x plus, sorry plus 1 equals 0, or 25x plus 2 equals 0. x equals negative 1. 25x equals negative 2, so x equals negative 2 over 25. And there you have your two solutions. And if you put both of these in, you can see that they match up with either the positive or the negative square root. But now, I was originally going to do quadratic formula as well in this video, but what I'll do is I'll do that in a second video, just so that uh, you haven't got two really, you haven't got one really long video to watch. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, please follow on with the next video to watch uh, solving quadratic equations using the quadratic formula. And don't forget, if you like these videos, please like and subscribe.